Are you scared of the dark? Yes? No? I'm not. Um, I rather like it actually. It's a bit like a warm, dark blanket. Maybe I'm like a parrot because apparently if you put a dark blanket over a parrot's cage, it will fall asleep in the dark. And I quite like going to sleep. Lumos. <laughs> That's cool. In some of my favourite stories, the characters use light to escape from the dark, from doubt, from danger. They find light is rescue and is safety and is encouragement. It shows them the truth and it helps them fight away evil. Now, Jesus described himself as the light of the world. In John chapter 8, verse 12, it says, Jesus once again addressed them. I am the world's light. No one who follows me stumbles around in the darkness. I provide plenty of light to live in. This is a lot of fun. Now, fascinating fact for you, in Lord of the Rings, which is another one of my favourite books, Galadriel, my dad wanted to call me Galadriel, but my mum said no, Galadriel gives Frodo the light of Erendir. There we go. There she is. It's the light of Erendir. And that light saves Frodo when he's fighting darkness and evil and it shows him the way and it gives him encouragement and it gives him strength. Jesus is the light of the world. Without him, we are lost. But it's all very well being able to see in that bright light that is Jesus. Uh, we can see the way forward. We can see any dangers that might be hidden or we might fall over. But we've got to actually do something about it or we're not actually going anywhere. Over the next few weeks, we're going to be looking at what it actually means to walk in that light, to have a relationship with Jesus. Last week, uh, it was our family service, and we talked about running the race of life with perseverance, keeping on going, even when it gets tough. And before that, it was Father's Day, and we talked about talking to your Heavenly Father and praying. So today is our last week of talking and thinking about praying. Well, not obviously not our last week ever, because as Christians we talk and think about praying quite a lot, because it's very important. But how should we pray? So what helps us to pray? Well, different things work differently for different people. Prayer is not very easy and it's very hard not to get distracted. So I'm going to do it again. Ready? Lumos. <laughs> I love that. How about reading the Bible? That might help. Reading the Bible. Find useful and helpful and encouraging verses. Maybe read about prayer. Maybe that would help you read. <laughs> try it. If it doesn't work, try something else. How about music? Some people love listening to music. Other people find it doesn't help them concentrate. But try it. Maybe, maybe together. Maybe read the Bible, listen to a worship song and see if that guides you into prayer. It's worth a try. Something that I find really difficult to do. Set aside time to pray. If something is important, we need to set aside time for it. And if you don't set aside time for it, you often just won't get round to it. What works for you? 
praying in the morning, praying in the evening, praying on the bus, praying in the car, praying by yourself, praying before meals, but set aside some time to pray. Concentrate. Block out all those distractions. Turn off the TV. Put your phone on silent. Set aside that time. Maybe listen to some music. Maybe read the Bible. But concentrate. Concentrate on God. Listen to God. And arrow prayers. If you're not the kind of person who wants to talk for a very, very long time, shoot up those arrow prayers every time you think of something to pray. And you might find the more you do your arrow prayers, the longer you'll start to pray. Praying is always a bit awkward and difficult at first and you don't know what to say, but practice, 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 practice. Send up those arrow prayers. Every time you see something or feel something that needs praying for, or you hear something that needs praying for, shoot up an arrow prayer. Pew, pew, pew. Practice, practice, practice. And eventually you'll find it becomes easier and more natural. Some people love a prayer diary. Keeping a prayer diary, writing down your prayers might help you concentrate. Concentrate. Prayer diary. Some people hate it. Some people just don't like praying or don't like writing down their prayers. If you do your arrow prayers to get into the habit of praying, you can write them down. Try writing them down and then you can look back over them and see which prayers God has answered or said yes or said no. Very important. Promise to pray for people. If someone's having a bad day, say, I'll pray for you. You could pray with them there and then. That's a bit daring. Or you could pray for them later. But do it. If you've promised, do it. And praying with others. Now, this can always feel a bit embarrassing. But going to prayer meetings and learning to pray with others, you don't need to pray out loud. But give it a try and find out what works for you. So find a way to make, of making prayer a habit. And then you'll find that you can get closer and closer to God because you know him better and he gets to know you better and you get to care about what he cares about and he knows about what you care about. It's a relationship. It goes two ways. And then we can know that we are never alone and we are never in the darkness, and we are never without help, even if sometimes we feel we are, because Jesus, our friend, Jesus, who walks beside us through our life, is the light of the world.